Are the rumors true? Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglis Guitar Show. I've been hearing a lot of talk that Guitar Center has been taking on a lot of used inventory because people want fast sales. So let's go ahead and hunt Guitar Center used, which if you don't know, you can go to their website, search whatever brand you want, and then over here on the side, they do have a condition tab, so you can select if you actually want to see the new models or if you're only interested in used. And then from there, you can filter them even further. But starting on our first page, they got a lot of vintage specials. This one's from 1956. It's definitely got some player's wear to it. Oh, and a headstock break. Seems a little bit expensive for being repaired. But we had just reviewed a double cut Billy Joe Jr. not too long ago. Here's the vintage version of it. Actually it appears to be in pretty decent shape for its age. Just a little bit of wear right here in the arm area. But this is currently their most expensive guitar. In the Gibson realm, a custom shop Jimmy Page Les Paul aged. Jimmy Page is like the number one Les Paul guy. Either him or Slash usually come to people's minds right away, depending on what generation you grew up in. And this appears to be the recreation of his number one. But you can go to Reverb. Yeah, these are all half the price, but you gotta remember this is the VOS version, not the age. Currently, the only one on Reverb wants twice as much as Guitar Center for number 110. And semi-recent sales data actually shows you between 18 and 25. This is one of those unique times where the most expensive item in the shop is actually fairly reasonably priced, if you're into collector guitars anyway. Next up we've got an 82 Custom for 8200. So far that actually looks pretty clean. It's got the diamond posi lock strap locks, potentially Tim Shaw PAFs, it's got the top adjust bridge, somebody's top wrapped it. Does it have the flip out winding tuners though? Ah oh man, they're teasing us. Can't tell, but it's from 82, confirmed. But from this photo, yes indeed a Rooney, we've got them. So it has all the special 80s parts, it's a relatively clean silver burst, this is definitely worth what they're asking. But the thing to know about 82s is this is a transitional period in time. I can't quite tell if there's a volute on this thing yet, but if there isn't, it probably has the mahogany neck. However, that's pretty early 82, it might still have the volute and be maple. Had this been for sale like two years ago during the Adam Jones ultra hype phase, that would have been an easy ten dollars to $12,000 example. The vintage silver burst market has definitely fallen, but it's still a good 50% higher than what it was before the craze. That's actually pretty tempting. But speaking of cool 80s things, here is a custom shop Karina Explorer, except for it's not the finish that you normally expect. Candy apple red, it looks minty, and the reason for that is probably because the factory put the Kaler on it. There's some guys that dig Kalers, but in the collectible guitar world, usually they're not as desirable on Gibson guitars. But occasionally you can find painted Karina Explorers, which are pretty rare in and of themselves. What's kind of funny is modern day Gibson, they just relaunched the Karina Explorer, and after about a year or so, they've also started to toy with these solid color finishes. They've also recently done bursts, as well as a cardinal red. But from the photos, this is looking ridiculously clean. So this is definitely for a collector that doesn't mind the Kaler, or likes it because it's factory stock and really clean. Speaking of the Karinas, here's a used one of the modern day ones. It's got the nice wood grain, making a V-shaped pattern too. They're asking $2,000 less than retail. But would you look at this, a second 82 custom. Now from this one photo, it almost looks better than the last one. It's got the same top adjust bridge, Tim Shaw PAFs. Unfortunately, both of them are missing the stickers that you would find on the pickup rings. We can tell it's got the flip out winding tuners right there. This one's maintained that silver color very well. I wonder if they got these as a set in a guitar show. The burst is very light on the headstock though, but I'm sure they black lighted it to make sure it's all right. But if you're more so looking for a player, check out the 74 custom. This has been a guitar Guitar Center for a couple of months now. I think we actually might have featured it in a previous episode. You got the Randy Road vibes going on with the heavily yellowed over lacquer, but it's been worn through in the arm area. You don't see that as often. Been refretted with giant frets. It's got extreme wear on the back. You can also tell the neck's really been played through. But what really shocks me is how on earth is it still on the original Klusen waffle back tuners? <laughs> These things don't stand the test of time, even if they are cool. That must be a special set. But ah, okay, there we go. So somebody has restored it. It definitely had other Grovers on there or something at some point. That's what all these additional lines are. It's from washers pressing on the face of the headstock. So those probably have conversion bushings on them, it'd be my guess. That's definitely stage four, and they're asking 7,500 for it. But here's an interesting one you don't see every day. Gibson for 700 bucks. It's a used SG Melody Maker. Kind of a cool one pickup SG. I'm not quite sure what lives underneath this guard. I haven't reviewed and documented one, but I do know that they came in some pretty cool colors. 
it's part of the Melody Maker lineup, so it could use a little bit of TLC to make it better than it is, and it's got the smaller headstock, and maybe you want to play around with some of your electronics, but I love the fact that everything's just built into the pick guard there. I love it as a quirky spec. Having a straight jack sticking out would have to rather not be that comfortable, but it's all done in the sake of making a cheaper guitar. Man, I kind of want to review one of those now. Here we've got a 2008 robot. However, it's not the blue burst one. It's actually one of the later burgundy purple slash reddish ones. I actually had a green one a long time ago that somebody de-roboticized, which is always an option on one of these if you don't like all the fancy tuning mechanisms or they stop working. In fact, sometimes they can just be fun little projects. And they're quirky Les Pauls. It's kind of like a studio, except for you still have the binding and then you have a fancy classic antiques headstock style. You don't see these every day. It wouldn't surprise me if we see something like this come back out of Gibson USA again. However, maybe it would be slightly more high end. Maybe they'll bind it or at least have binding on our fretboard and give it fancier inlays. But it is a set neck version of a Firebird with the strings on the side. And the P90s give you non-reverse Firebird style vibes. But since we don't currently have the original collection Firebirds, I could see something like this coming about in the future. They're asking just shy of 1800. For a little bit more, you could get a traditionally specced one. But here's one from the Smartwood series. This is the Swamp Ash Studio. Basically a regular Les Paul Studio, except for you have a Swamp Ash body, which this one actually has some pretty exceptional wood grain, but you generally see these range between like 800 to 1200. Sometimes really exceptionally figured ones will go for a bit more. They've got it posted at 14. Ooh, nice. It's got a 2000s case, likely original. What on earth is this? Gibson 2016 Les Paul Jr. Billy Joe Armstrong? That model wasn't produced that year. What is this thing? I think they meant 2006 or something like that. It's kind of hard to read. But that is definitely an initial run Billy Joe signature. So that means the big question is, does it have the leopard print interior case? But hey, would you look at that? The store is great. They tell you it's there. If it's truly excellent condition, that's not too bad for one of those that has the original case. Because the original runs have really dried up on the used market. The only other available black one is about the exact same price and you gotta import it from Norway. Always fun to see a ES-333, Tom DeLong style, just without his signature paint job and an additional pickup. And yeah, there's a lot of other things different about it, but if you want the construction to be about right, if you wanted to do a refinish project, this is what you want, and that's why they're just as expensive as a 335. Speaking of Tom DeLong, looks like somebody took a 335 dot reissue, faded, and uh, gave it the vibes. That's pretty cool, especially when they put the dirty fingers in the bridge. But hey, this is actually a really good deal for someone. So Guitar Center had a limited edition mirror pickguard 70s Flying V. These were shortly offered back when they were 2200 new. And now that these things are like 2500 bucks brand new, a used one for that price, that will not last forever. There's one of those cool Koa Top Les Paul standards. I believe they're from 2016. This one doesn't have the most crazy figuring in the world, but it's very uniform. It almost just looks straight up like mahogany, which could be a good and or a bad thing, depending on what you're looking for. But this medallion up here says limited edition and then tells you what number it is, I think out of 150. Gibson toyed around with a lot of things like that. 5,000 is definitely a premium. But hey, an RD standard. As usual, we only got one photo to work with, but it actually appears to be in pretty all right shape. Outside of our pick guard being all scratched up, I like the wood grain we've got going on. This one doesn't have any of the fancy Moog electronics. If that is accurately intonated, that might be a sign of trouble. Looks like our frets could use a polish. But other than that, you don't see these out in the wild too often. Next up, they've got an SG Elegant. From this photo, it looks like one of the beautiful rust finished ones. I had one of these in my collection for over a year. It's one of my favorite finishes on the SG Elegants. But for whatever reason, it took a long time to sell, but I was asking kind of a premium on it. Typically, 3,000 to 4,500 is fair game on these. Just all depends on condition. That is a nice rust if anybody's looking for it. My favorite part has to be the back of these things. These photos do it no justice. So 4,000, that's about right. Not only one, two SG Elegants, but they call this one a plus. Oh nice, it's the other version of these that get the matching headstock. So it's the green, I believe I documented the red. But we still get the beautiful abalone inlays, this one will have black binding on it. And yeah, now that we're really zooming in here, we can kind of tell it's got some nice figuring. And cool, a price drop on a 1980 Artisan. The asking prices of Artisans have gone insane on Reverb, but they're not necessarily selling. For the longest time, this model was like between three and 5,000. Like you'd have to have a really, really, really nice one to get above five. And even that would be pushing it. 
But then a lot of people started asking like eight to 10,000. They're just not selling for that. Now this one actually doesn't appear to be in that bad of shape, minus a missing toggle switch tip. If you like the vintage burst finish, it might be worth it to see if they'd be willing to cut you a little bit more of a deal. This is the next version of the L5S that I want to document. The one with the low impedance pickups, because I love the sound of these things, but you have to get one of the very early iterations. People prefer the humbucker variations. I mean, this one's got replaced tuners, but most of them do. Maybe not the craziest figured one we've ever seen, but it's all right. Gold's pretty worn off the pickups, but yeah, that happens. Everything else is looking nice though. 4,500 bucks is not too bad for one of those. And here's kind of a unique one. So they just listed as Gibson Custom Shop Les Paul, right? And from this photo, it's kind of hard to tell what color it is. But then you get here. It's almost like a cranberry-ish purple. And it's a quilt top. That's pretty fascinating. Ooh, we're rocking a black back. And it's from 2008. Here's an 85 Custom, the last full year of the Norlin era. Wow, that's got a good vibe to it. I love all that finish checking on this three-piece top. Those are replaced knobs, most likely, unless they've just heavily aged like the finish. Pick guard has been removed. The cream surrounds are not factory stock. Somebody has removed our poker chip and definitely replaced the whole through a toggle switch because that is a completely different mounting bracket. And you have a little bit of a shadow left over from where the poker chip was removed. Looks like we got the Dunlop strap locks, original frets yet, nice yellowed overhead stack, although a replaced truss rod cover. And for as much checking as it has, it doesn't have that much wear. However, it looks like we might have some hanger rash or something going on here. Unfortunately, our description doesn't tell us about the pickups, but we do have a chainsaw case. That could be worth looking into. If it's got the original pickups and you dig the vibe, that's a lot cheaper than that beat up white Les Paul custom we saw. SGGT Muscle Green. There was a time when these would fetch like seven to eight thousand dollars and i just don't understand what happened to the market it's like just one day they stopped selling and then the prices came down they're very unique i don't understand anything that's going on here and don't tell me because i'm eventually going to buy one of these and figure it out myself but out of the gt series the sg's definitely got the cool end of the deal however if you want to check out a les paul version you can view that episode here but whoa, look at this Dove Custom. Now the 70s Doves don't get a lot of love. One of those few times where the Gibson truss rod covers actually have three screws in it. But ah, oh, I thought that was like super aged lacquer. No, it's just yellow lighting. However, you do have a lot of off-gassing going on with your pick guard, which has shrunk that. A lot of times it causes the top to crack. This is why I don't deal with acoustic guitars, because a lot of times they need a neck reset, and then how are you ever going to keep it factory or 100% original? But I wouldn't mind a late 60s Dove one day. But hey, look at this 81 standard. This is what I was talking about earlier. It says patent applied for. At least at one point in time it did. I'm not sure if that's just reflecting in a way that it looks black. We don't have the top adjust bridge. We do have the posi locks. Looks like we've got some replaced knobs, at least one of them. But that's a really light looking fretboard. Probably just needs a little bit of conditioning love. And hooray, we've got a legible serial number, 1984. And this is when the standards got smaller headstocks again. That's not the worst price, especially for this color. And if those are still Tim Shaw's. You don't see one of these every day. This is the HD6X Pro. For the longest time, I thought this was part of the whole robot series of guitars because, let's face it, it looks like the initial run robot. But no, it's like more so meant for recording. It's supposed to give you the most pure sound humanly possible. One day, when I'm feeling a little bit braver, I'll have to document one. But they're kind of cool with their unbound ebony fretboards, not having any inlays adorning it. I've seen people list these for like four to 6,000, so 2,700 doesn't seem so bad. And ooh, one of the cool melody makers. So starting around 1967-ish, they switch over to the SG body shape. So you can have a lot of fun modifying one of these. But one of their most iconic features is the fact that they have the finish only on the body and then they leave the necks natural. And ouch. My best bet would be a strap laid on it and melted our finish. And to end out our episode, I'm kind of surprised to see one of these used in Guitar Center for this price. 2400 bucks when they're 3200 brand new, and they're pretty hard for them to even keep in stock. So, are the rumors true? I didn't necessarily see any, like, crazy good deals or a large influx of what I normally look for. But then again, people with their Gibsons, they don't normally fire sale those things. So maybe it would be different for other brands. There were a couple of interesting ones, but we'll catch you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.